There we go. So yeah, nice and slow. Just walk around nice 16. and slow. 16. And that, now give me even a bigger number. Someone sitting on that top of that car. I told you, it's always gonna pick up the cars. It's gonna always put somebody on the car. So unless you can ask them to wave at you, and you get somebody to wave back, that's when I'll be convinced you have a ghost. Okay? <laughs> All right. Is that it right here? If I don't say something that is like relevant to what we're doing, yeah. Can you hear it? Like when you go back, can you? Hear Yours it? is recording. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Again, if you guys suck at this, it's fine. We got a recording of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spot check it. 21. Is I'll that take it. it? Um, I don't know. Uh, probably not. Looks like the tree over there. Anything that has like a branch or a leaf in it, like a tree or in a bush, it's always gonna put a person on that too.
Can you wave at me? Can you wave at me? Can you wave at me again? Can you wave at me? Please. Can you wave at me? Right back down to like zero or one, didn't it? Yep, I thought so. Somebody's hanging around here, just not saying much tonight. Again, almost about to end, and she's not going to give me anything. <laughs> Lily, you got anything? She can't hear me. You got anything? No. It's okay, just tell me the silly things, remember. We got anything? No. Okay, I'm going to wrap this one up because there's not really a whole lot of communication going on. So I'm just going to bring us all to the back again. Do we stop? Do we stop recording? Do we stop recording? Yes. Go ahead and hit that yep. camera if you have one. Carolyn, go ahead and hit start on your camera, camera, yeah. Carolyn. How did that got with a 1.7? All right, so. Uh, now that I kind of have the gist of what's going on here, uh, you guys will see, we'll get you guys all included in the group, so Tyler will go over chatting. Sorry. Right? You're good. 
<laughs> I like to see who I got so that way they're not running off with all my gear. I want to make sure I'm going to be quicker than them. Um, <laughs> so, welcome to Philadelphia Alley. Every ghost tour comes here. I, I was actually going to take this out of my route, but this guy keeps following me around town. You're going to see that here in just a minute. Uh, cameras. Uh, you do want to try to get a shot. You don't have to keep a person in view at this location because we have enough foliage where we have the temperature differences. So I usually tell the cameras to try to get a shot going one way or the other. So that way you're not just staying here in the circle. Um, so we've got to see how this goes. So Lily, you literally want to take uh, your left hand. So that one. And you want to grab the top handle. Other hand. You got it. Use your other hand. Grab the top handle and like hold it at your side so we can look down there. There you go. Now you're on it. You don't have to hold it up. You can even hold it down. Like put your arm all the way down so that way you don't get tired. There you go. So just trying to make it easy for you. Um, so again, with this alley, every ghost tour comes here. Um, I actually, I like the story, but it's a big old cliche. Let me kind of get into it. Have you guys ever been down here before? Is this all of you guys' time, first time here in Charleston? Okay. Not like... I, I just met it in Charleston in general. Oh, yeah. Okay, because this is a pretty popular alley. And again, every ghost tour comes down here. So here's how it goes. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. For those of you that are listening to Spirit Boxes with headphones, if you hear the song Brown Eyed Girl, it's not a coincidence. We hear it all the time because it's part of his name. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Even on, you know, your recording, if you're not listening, it's fine. It may come up later. Anyway, he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance Amanda. So when this group passes by, we'll just kind of split the seas and let them go. Um, let them pass through. So again, even just regular standard folks. So his fiance, Amanda, just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. So she has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash that she just got. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money, so he tells Amanda to get rid of him. He comes here to Charleston to prove that he's not. On his way into town, the coachman that he had set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a good start for the doctors new living here in Charleston. And by the way, that's like having a really bad Uber driver that drops you off and there's a gunman at the door waiting to take you out. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, somebody was walking by and seeing what was about to happen. He knew the coachman and knew he was going to try to kill the newcomer. The person walking by was named Ralph Isaacs. I say his name slowly because he has the same initials as where the doctor came from, Rhode Island. We were getting the letters RI on the two regular spirit boxes, so I bought the Ouija board device to verify the RI, and we've had it about a half a dozen times whenever I bring up Ralph's name. That's the reason I bought that device solely for this location. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. I do that from time to time. Um, it's not always productive, as you guys have seen tonight. We've got nothing out of it, but we'll see if we get something later. Back to Ralph. He tells the doctor, dude, I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you. Come with me. I got friends at 59 Church Street that will rent you a room and you'll be safe. Doc took him up on the offer. So Dr. Ladd and Ralph became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point. He's not after Amanda's money. Amanda gets wind of this, she's moving down soon so they could be married, and Dr. Ladd became known as the Whistling Doctor. Did you guys hear all those people whistling as they walked by us earlier? They just heard the same story. Now, that's another reason why I hate this story, is because every haunted city you're ever going to go to has a cliched whistling ghost. We all have one, ours just happens to be a doctor. Back to Dr. Ladd and Ralph. They go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other at the play because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. So they have to talk about these plays on the way home. They go see Richard III one night, and on their way home, they're talking about the new actress that they just saw. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph didn't. They start arguing, and then Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It got really ugly, and they went their separate ways. But Ralph went to his friends at the newspaper, put an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of thing. Dr. Ladd saw the ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Doolo's Alley. We're going to settle this. This used to be called Doolo's Alley, everybody. Let's part ways for public. I always do that. Wait, it's trying to be a bad thing. Oh, All right, so they came down here to Doolo's Alley, and they went back to back. They took their 10 paces away from each other. They turned. The doctor pointed his gun in the air and shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up. But Ralph has his one bullet. He puts it in the knee of the doctor. Dr. Ladd didn't die, he fell to the ground. His friends picked him up and took him home to 59 Church Street, where he died 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. I'll point out two things. First off, the year he died was 1786. Gunshot wounds back then were a lot different than what they are now. He's also a doctor.
probably just thought he had lead poisoning and tried to bleed it out himself. Although he failed, because obviously he died. And every ghost tour tells you to listen for the whistles while you're down here. That's why all those people were whistling when we came by. Which proves my next point. If you're going to try this on your own and walk all the way through the alley with your voice recorders from your phones, just remember everybody knows the damn story. Everybody that walks by Cumberland Street or Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down the alley, me included. I do it all the time, um, especially since I got thrown out of here. Let's talk about that, because that's the fun part of the story. So, <laughs> I love how her recording is going to be like almost on the ground. It's so awesome. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to watch that part. So, <laughs> she's like, I'm bored. Come, I'm just going to hold this lower and lower. Um, but anyway, so the alley didn't go all the way through the way we came in. About halfway between the gate and Cumberland Street, there was a wall up there. That's why I like to come down here. Not because it's just dark, even though Peyton said that's a really cool aspect of the door. Um, the wall was there because this used to be called Cow Alley. This is where they kept all the livestock for the city of Charleston. Cows, goats, and chickens were all down here. What does that mean for you? That means that the bricks on the other side are older than the ones you're standing on. Down at that side, those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down there in one of those bricks and fingerprint swipes in others. I used to take my groups down there for a history lesson. There's nothing paranormal about it, but we all need to see how far we've come away from slavery. However, remember, by the way, I treat that brick the same way I do a grave. Nothing's going to happen at that brick, because that's the last place you're going to find that poor little guy or, or gal. Um, so November 26th, 2020, took my entire group down there to give them their history lesson on the brick, and they're all huddled around that brick, waiting for something to happen with all of their gear. I'm trying to hustle them along because I know nothing's going to happen because we're also outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. The new owner of that mansion came out screaming. He was not happy with me. My daughter thought it was hysterical, though, because she was on the tour that night and her dad's getting yelled at. She was all about it. We moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't do tours on Thanksgiving simply because I used to work for Walmart upper management for over 10 years. You all like to fight over towels. You scarred me for life. I don't do Thanksgiving anymore. Anyway, next point was the 28th, the next day was the uh, Friday. So I called my partner that I had and I told him what happened with the neighbor. He laughed at me just like my daughter and he said, dude, you can't go down that far. It's residential, you have to reroute the group. It's Black Friday, I'm sold out again. So I reroute my group, but what I told them, I don't believe in the next story. I'm, I'm a vampire guy, I'm not into pirates. What do you have? Stop here. <laughs> I'm not stopping here. Um, <laughs> we're gonna keep on going. Um, but at yeah, any rate, yeah. so, I'm not into pirates that much, but I also didn't tell them exactly who we were going to be investigating. Before we left, somebody with a spirit box heard the name Anne. I didn't tell them who. Anne Bonnie is who we're going to be discussing next. So I was kind of like, okay, maybe we'll get something. We go up around the corner. I told them a little bit I did know about piracy, because remember, I didn't have much time to do research. I'm just trying to wing it. Um, somebody else heard the number 300 on their spirit box. I don't know what that one means. I write it down. I do the research for them the next morning. We were there November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720, the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. We had other things that happened that night, but that was a very odd occurrence. So I have read more books and, and watched more documentaries, played more video games on pirates than I ever wanted to in my entire life. I was actually pretty ticked off when this all occurred because I have a master's degree in creative writing. Especially when I'm doing this, I need facts and data. My problem with pirates, it's those stories come from pirate lore. It was written a hundred years after the golden age of piracy. That's a problem for me because that means I have to read more books on a subject I wasn't too keen on. I'm keen on it now, trust me, I read, I'm still reading more books on pirates, but at the same time, everything we're about to discuss at the next location came from a minimum of two resources. So, and that was still on there. Um, so you had stock here and then fan when you showed me your list and porch is on there now. Um, so obviously you use the same app, but yours doesn't have as many words as mine. You can already see the ads at the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah, because I didn't do the refresh yeah. of the... Uh, mine was like a lifetime sub for like three bucks on that one. I've been using it forever. Yeah. I've had that thing for like seven or eight years now. I can't even count. Um, but again, I also like to stop here at the gate because not a whole lot of people know why the gate is here. It also shows the extent Thank of my research. Where, did you just have that next to mom's phone? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So, <laughs> good luck. Um, so, remember I told you that we couldn't come in this way because there used to be a wall up there? Like many, many years ago. With that said, if there was a loser to the duel down here, the gate was the shortcut to get to the cemetery on the other side. Otherwise, the loser, the dead guy, they have to drag him all the way down to Queen Street and then double back to get up to the cemetery, and that delays them going to celebrate the winner with a pint. So again, I call this the death gate because the rod iron wasn't always here. This is probably early 1900s on the gate, but you can see that the archway is part of the original alley. So again, remember it was Cow Alley, then Dueler's Alley. 
that partition that was up there is probably there still when it was Dulo's Alley. I feel like I've heard this story before, but I can't. Yeah, it's very popular. I like think we all tell it. Oh, or you've probably seen one of my TikToks that talks about the whistling dog. Oh. Yeah, it's probably a two. So, <laughs> um, have we heard or seen anything else major that I need to know about, Melanie? I know that you were on, on mute. So, what else do you have going on over there, Ashley? Now that you're like multitasking. She's got like five tries. Oh, uh, you were saying loser and it popped up Lynn. Oh, that's actually good. We get that here all the time. I'm not surprised. And three L's? Place group settlement squad opponent. Opponent's good. Seven. Oh, seven? Let me explain seven. Did anybody else hear the number seven? We normally hear it in twos at this location. Let me explain why. It is Dr. Lad's birthday, July 7th, 7 to 7. We get it all the time. He would love to brag about his damn birthday. Loves, I, I get it all the time. And the weird thing that you have it on a word list, is it the numeral or is it spelled out? Spelled out. You can't say that stuff, guys. You can't make it up, I promise. It's actually one of the better pieces we've had so far, other than Brady's readings. I'm sorry, it's on his side. Um, and he's now, you know, getting the gist of how, it, you know, how much EMS comes off the mom's phone. It's super cool. Um, so we're going to go up and around the corner. Um, as we pass by that group, if they're still there, Melanie, just move when we pass them so we don't interrupt them. Um, but yeah, uh, video recordings, if you want to hit that stop, yeah, go ahead and do a reset on why you broke it. What'd you do? Did you sign into Google on my phone? are going to be discussing very quickly that little tiny building up front with the crosses on it. Those are not crosses, those are earthquake bolts. If you're not familiar with those, they're basically turnbuckles. You can turn them if we have an earthquake and it's supposed to tighten the building up so it doesn't get any further uh, damage from the earthquake. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pointing them out because you guys have seen them all over town in the shape of lion heads and pineapples and all kinds of Charleston charm stuff. Um, even the apartment building behind it, the brick building, has them on every single floor. Um, it's just something we do here in Charleston, or uh, something we did here in Charleston. But the big ones, uh, that on the little building, is part of the reason why we're here. That's the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston ever put in. The reason why is it's the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. We're here because this building was being built at the same time Anne Bonny was coming here to start a new life. It's what I call a familiar. For those of you that watch the TV shows and YouTubers, you've probably seen the Boo Buddy. That is a teddy bear with a little K2 meter in it, right? So if a child ghost is attracted to it, they would recognize the teddy bear as a toy. Think of that concept with this building. We don't have many buildings this old. So the hope here is that she's here because she recognizes it because it's from her era. All right, so let's kind of get into Anne's story. It actually begins right in the middle of the construction of the building, which took 10 years. Does that sound like our government? Small building, 10 years? No, not at all. I'll answer for you. It's perfectly fine. Um, but 1708. The young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She comes here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. Is everybody with me so far? Okay, the three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. How mad was the wife that she kicked them out of the country when there's no planes? So this was by boat. They landed in Georgetown. If you're not familiar with the coast, that's between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad bought a plantation up there, but mom died pretty quickly. That means dad is now sending young Anne down here to Charlestown to sell things from the plantation to keep things afloat on the plantation. So, hence the familiar building. Now, Anne back home in Ireland was said to be a badass when even when she was a little girl. So Peyton said, how old did you say you were? Nine? Nine. nine. So I want you to picture somebody Peyton's size. When Anne was seven, eight, nine years old, they say she killed a servant with a knife to the belly out of anger. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine somebody Peyton's size doing that? That's pretty crazy stuff. Not to put her on there like the murderous role. Um, <laughs> like that was really bad of me, by the way. Now I'm thinking about her sweet little innocent face. Just made her a murderer. Um, but anyway, so just giving you her mentality to kind of go through her history, right? <laughs> <laughs> the building's done in 1713, but pirates were coming through Charleston in 1715. Anne is ecstatic because she's going to fall in love with one of these guys so she can earn her freedom, just like a man. It's a man's world at this point. So the first guy she fell in love with, and I say it like that because there's a handful of these gents. We're going to go through them all. That's what makes the story. That's why his round spread was really funny in the back of my brain. Oh. So, yeah. So the first guy is James Bonney. You already see where this one's going because I've already told you her pirate name. Dad didn't approve. They ran away to Jamaica. They eloped, and now Anne Cormack is Anne Bonney. That's where her pirate name came from. However, when they get down there to Jamaica and they're already married, she realizes her new husband is not Captain Jack Sparrow, like what she was hoping for. This guy turns out to be a privateer. That means he is a spy for the British. He's a coward. This isn't who she wanted. 
She falls in love again, guy number two. This is John Rackham. Everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the guy they based your Johnny Depp character off of, by the way, just in case you were wondering. And Jack has his own crew and his own ship. And wants to be part of the crew, but you can't put a female on a pirate ship because it's bad luck. I normally throw that question back to you guys, but we have short people in the group tonight, and I don't need raunchy answers around them. So, <laughs> I was like, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and look like the crew, you can be part of the crew, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her from his wife. She gets it. It's a man's world. Most of us are adults here, put two and two together. She's a female in his quarters. She's eventually gonna get pregnant. You can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's gonna figure out that she's a girl, they'll get rid of Jack as captain and boat him off. So before that happens, he drops Anne off in Cuba. Have the baby here with these friends of mine, they'll help you out and come back later. We'll figure it out then. She goes and has the baby, but returns without a child. We have no idea what happens to the baby. None of my research has ever discovered it. She also comes back dressed as a female. This makes Jack pretty angry because now everybody's gonna know he let a girl on the ship. So to make him even more mad, she's gonna go flirting with the pirate crew he just captured down below deck. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female. Just like a guy, to be part of the crew, the Calico Jack just captured. Now we have two females, just like males. Right? I told you, this, is a little, this one gets a little twisty. Of confusion. I told you, round spread. We're all over it. Um, so with that said, this young lady's name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. So Anne and Mary became friends, maybe lovers, we know sure on that one because of the time frame but the british find out where they are send a whole fleet of ships the rumor is is that Anne and mary were the only two not drunk enough to come up and fight with one bullet flint locks they don't know how to use cannons yet they've been pirates for very long so obviously two ladies with one bullet guns cannot take on a whole fleet of ships they get arrested as they're being arrested Anne looks at her captain and beau the jack and tells him i'm sorry to see you here but if you would have fought like a man you wouldn't be hanged like a dog the word dog shows up a lot on your communication, just so you guys know. Now the judge wants to see the two quote-unquote men that fought back so violently on their own. He's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunk pirates that wouldn't fight. They're dead and gone. The two ladies go in front of the judge and reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves, and he doesn't give a damn that they're female. They're still pirates. So they scream out, we plead our bellies, which means they're claiming to be pregnant. You can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he delays the hanging, sends them to the jail. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne and brings her home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four. What do you got? Luke. Luke. I don't know who Luke is. I said something about an ill, like Luke and... Lucas. Luke and... Okay. That would be Eliza's maiden name is Lucas. Gotcha. So I'd be more excited if it said the actual Lucas versus Luke. Um, so, but again, guy number four. You guys get my point? We're going to count Mary. Anne has four children and dies at the age of 84. Very abrupt ending because we don't know squat about her after her pirate career and it's all up for speculation i don't like to spread rumors i'm sure you guys picked up on that by now mary reed died five months later in that jamaican jail from whatever pirates back from in a jamaican jail use your imagination call it scurvy i don't care so they give her all kinds of pirate romantic stuff so i'm not going to control the environment like what we did over there at the tinkney mansion site you guys all know what you're doing i'm just going to tell you a few things i left out ask whatever you want to in this location uh this isn't a place where i'm going to say you have to be respectful i actually say smoke them if you got them and if you have a bottle of rum let's break it out it'll attract them so you guys looking at each other did you guys bring some rum because i'm in <laughs> so um but anyway here's what i left out the names of ann bonnie's parents that's the father and the mistress i didn't tell you what those were i didn't tell you the city that ann grew up in in ireland the name of calico jack's ship and the color of ann bonnie's hair so uh cameras obviously stay away from the two cars brady if you get anything on there 2.5 and higher back here i'm excited the closer you go over there it's just like walking on the sidewalk so you might get a four to a six over there. I'm not gonna be excited. If you get it back here, I'm excited. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, hey, this wall is not your friend. All these leaves here are gonna make it look like a whole bunch of men just standing against the wall. So you might not wanna point your camera that way. Everybody else, you guys know what you're doing. Let's spread out, let's see what we can do. Julia, me, No, but we are standing next to a cemetery, so I don't know what's going on. This might be a Julia and Luke, you know, <laughs> couple. And I'll dive in. All the names that show up there, I go through the records just to see if something happens. Okay. I'm throwing darts, sometimes it sticks, right. but I also like a secondary clue. So, is there a Julia and a Luke? So, it's so Charleston that are married. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I have a couple named Julia on the ship here. So, I told you you have a bunch of these people driving around here. If you were worried about it, I'd like to check them out. Say that again? If you were worried about it, I'd like
Like someone's dancing on top of you. <laughs> and then there was a snick stick man standing right there. Yeah. That sounds scary. You tell him. You tell him. Let's see if you can find it again. Oh, no, he's at a 41 here. It was, um, I was walking right there and there was no static at all. And it was like a man's voice, but like light. And it wasn't a phone. And it said, hello. Okay. Definitely have to look for that. And then I got a 79. That's Kevin. Are you running when you're getting those numbers? Show me. I want to see what you're <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he say 100,000? No. They thought he said. Oh. He said a bad word. Oh. What they say? Oh, you've been getting those too? Yeah, they I'm just bad. not saying it. Those are the oh. most clear. <laughs> Did you get it? No, there's some prison I've been getting. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of those. Oh, oh. Yeah. You can say something. They keep getting bad words. <laughs> Who's getting bad words? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> You okay? all the dirty stuff that, you know, I was getting over there. <laughs> we had more come up. We I had got the word pizza meat, you want some? Pizza yeah. meat, you want some? <laughs> He's got widespread going on. Like, he had the word wide show up on his. He's got all kinds of things moving around on there. <laughs> There's, like, creepy nights. There's been, like, in between the set. It's been, like, really deep voices, but I can't, I don't know what they're yeah, saying. And that's okay. You don't have to hear it. Yeah, like, well, you have to look um, at it. Like, somebody, like, just rolling in or something. Happy here? I'm not getting anything. Yeah. 
and it happens sometimes. What's going on now? What's in the middle of your screen? It's getting weird. It keeps saying it's white. It is getting very weird. It's getting weird. I'm right now. Decades. I have decades. Okay. For a hurricane. Right by those. Oh, yeah. Ladies, is what you guys thought you signed up for, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> like getting a bunch of dirty words and <laughs> no, racial defamation. No. I thought maybe some civil war. Yeah. I, no, I go, I go further back, back, obviously. We so went everything in, we've been yeah. talking, talking about so far has all been from colonial days. Yeah. So. No. What do you guys see what we're doing in our last location? Yeah, we're really going to twist things up on that one. What it's is it? Weird. It's going to get weird. <laughs> Where are we going next? Um. So... It is not windy tonight, so we're gonna actually add in a normal space that I do on Sundays. Um, I don't go there if it's windy or a weekend because it's too noisy. Uh, so that one will be very quick. And then we, I, I'm not gonna tell you yet because it's a, kind of a surprise, you'll see. It's a lot of fun. You're gonna actually have a really important part because you have the cool camera. So. We are doomed. <laughs> oh, <man. Ow. laughs> no, what's going on with yours? Because they're getting all kinds of dirty stuff over here. What did you start? Uh, reach every day. Uh, steady. That just says too old. Fluid. That's it. That's nothing really. I, I literally heard too old. Like it was super quick. Catch up with. I always get back. <laughs> You're so what? tall. Ashley, what do you got going on? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, What's that? Pearl jam. Pearl jam. jam? Yeah. <laughs> what? I think you said two. What? Say what? Two. Country. Why? Why is that in there? I don't think it's a And now it's getting purple. Oh, yeah, we've been very cool. It's okay. It was funny in the movie. Yeah. Is it bad? That one? Are we going to a bar? <laughs> going to a bar? It was like a little Is that what you just heard? What's his name? No. Like, what's his name? That the Dr. Football Lad? Player. Uh, let's just take John. Like, he's don't way go, over. Don't go to the end. Don't go there. Something like that. Oh, we're he don't to... move. I'm assuming there's probably nothing with John Boy or Billy. Uh, yes, both of those names. So, tell us what Jack's real name was John. And then Billy, we actually had that here last night. Uh, it's actually short for William. And it would be Anne, Bonnie's father. Okay. So. And Billy would have been a nickname that they would have used even back in those days. So mm -hmm. uh, we did actually have that here last night, too. So I'm not surprised that you know we've, we've gotten it again. Um, but it was Billy, just the way you said it. And John Boy, like you've got the whole Walton clan going on there. Like I'm thinking it was the radio station. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to see. French, and you actually had the word France earlier. Yeah. He had the word France show up when we separated. Yep. And that's, I tied it to this used to serve in the French and Indian War. You, you do get the word French and or Indian at a time. So, uh, and he has the word, uh, word country. It's pretty vague. Like, which country? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. Alright, I'm going to call it on this one. We did get one little spike on this guy, so let me give you guys the brief answers. And i got to explain the next two stops because it's a little bit different than what we've been doing. Pause uh, it. So, um, let's go over to this wall. And you're going to stand up here with me, okay? So that way they can see the whole video later on. Western man by a door for pain. Okay. That's kind of where I got the gist of that one. Henry, if you're here, we'd like to hear something about your job, please. Can you tell me something about your job? This is the way we always start. Nice and easy. 
Let's see what we can get out of you to verify that you're here. Now? Yes, right now. Um, you can give us an image. We are using the green box tonight too. This is Melanie inside the green box. Passing by. And this is Ashley. We can hear whatever you want us to hear. Henry, can you tell us something about your job, your occupation, please? Feel free to change the subject. We can work with that too. Throughout your busy day. <laughs> why I chose her everybody she's gonna give me a lot of long sentences Henry you know we don't do this for long so the more you can give us in a short amount of time 98 Henry when the Russians what do you got Russian when the Russians playing Henry did somebody else come with you tonight we party every day <laughs> Henry, let me know if somebody else came with you. You gotta give us their first name. They took her away. They took her away. Sally, you can I think start. I'm messing with the report on Fly. this thing. What'd you do? It just keeps reporting and stopping. Yeah, don't look down. Look up. Wait, it's okay. Wait, it follows what I. Wait, okay, just look down. I see. He's going to finish what he started. <clears throat> yeah, for 10 minutes. That's how we do this, Henry. Are By the hand. To, are you trying to explain who else is here? Hi, Mom. Hi, Jimmy. Henry? Perception. Who else came with you tonight? These are weird phrases that we're getting. Very odd. Who else came here with you? Still looking for verification of your occupation. I would prefer this is Wayne. In the green I'm sorry box. we did not. Henry, verify your occupation for us in the green box. backwards. Mary, Everything in between. Mary, is that you? Since you fell? Watch it. Breathing a little heavy, Alex, okay? This is why I don't write anything down. Like, I want to make sure everybody sees what I'm doing. By the way, she looks like she's about to fall over to her left. Really mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can I pause for a second? Take me to the. Die? That's okay. You're leaning. Yeah. Henry. Having a stroke. <laughs> Henry, we're only six minutes in. Standing. We got four minutes left. On my own.
tell you all the things a man ought to know. Geopilot speaks. Speak. Everybody has Tourette's syndrome right now. It's great. <laughs> I love this. What happens? Okay, Arriving of the Spirit. What happens? Give them praise. Henry, you gotta be more specific. I was just looking for verification that you were here tonight. Can you tell us goodnight? Going once. Oh. Yeah, it's a little short. Going twice. 